The Westchester Railroad Company, which began its journey in 1831 after the businessmen and community leaders of Westchester, Pennsylvania, charted the name, thus creating one of America's earliest railroads. 27 years later, the town would see the creation of its second railroad in the form of the Westchester and Philadelphia Railroad. Both railroads would eventually be swallowed up by the Pennsylvania Railroad in 1881. At its peak, the PRR operated 27 scheduled trains from Philadelphia to Westchester, 24 of which being dedicated passenger service. Following the merger of the Pennsylvania Railroad and the New York Central, the newly named Penn Central would continue to operate trains up until its well-documented bankruptcy. Ownership of the line would change hands again in 1976 when the Consolidated Rail Corporation, also known as Conrail, was formed as a way to save America's failing railroads. Conrail would sell the line to the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, SEPTA, in 1979, but would continue to operate the line until 1983 when SEPTA would assume full control after the contract with Conroe concluded. Eventually, in 1986, due to low ridership and failing infrastructure, SEPTA would cease service below Elwyn Station, meaning Westchester would be without rail service for the foreseeable future. That would change when a group of railroad enthusiasts approached the borough of Westchester in regards to restoration of service in 1996. Today, operated by Four States Railway Service Incorporated, the Westchester Railroad lives on thanks to their efforts. In 2023, the Westchester Railroad will operate various trains and special excursions between Westchester and Glenmill Station, a distance of roughly 7.7 .7 miles. The ticket prices for these excursions range between $5 and $35. The railroad is purely volunteer. If you're ever in the Westchester area, I highly recommend visiting this piece of history. It's May 28, 2017, and I'm on location in Westchester for the Memorial Day Special. Leading today's train is a former Penn Central and Conrail GP38 numbered 7706 sporting a colorful paint scheme. With a few connections to the railroad, I was able to ride in the cab for a round trip between Westchester and Glen Mills. That's what he always tell me. You guys want to go farther than Glen Mills. What's that? You always want to go farther than Glen Mills. Main switch line to the world. Unfortunately, with septic on the wall, that kind of kills it. Yeah. Oh, they've been talking about that for years. I, I'll believe it when it happens. Well, they're building the station now. Oh, are they actually physically building the station? Yeah, it's almost done, actually. Yeah. That kills your whole... Oh, other, yeah. than, other than Lansdale Day, if that ever happens again, or Philly trip. Right. Yeah. Well, that would be neat. I would love to. I would love to see that. You'd love to operate it. Oh, that, yeah. You'd be going like 30, 40 miles per hour. Yeah, no doubt. I'd... Those, al those, al those Alcos especially need a good stretch every now and again. That's a 2,400 horsepower towing around four or five passenger yeah, that, cars all the time. You're having fun. Gee, those Alcos don't work. At but all. it's only the one because the one has cab signals, so you don't have to step the pilot right. right up. Because I've heard from Christian, there's a lot of people in the cab when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. But those, those Alcos, they don't, they don't get a workout around here. They're great edges. I love running. What's but, your favorite though? Well, I haven't run 1803 yet. The C424s are nice. I mean, they, they will um, they will load up and start hauling just like that. Four cars to get I mean, it's like compared to EMDs, which are slower to yeah. load up. Running an Alco, it's like driving a sports car. It's like gates and lights, gates and lights. It's like you know, driving a uh, Malibu versus a Camaro. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Except for the smoke factor, which Alcos blow a lot of smoke. Yeah. Well, these blow smoke because they get carbon. Blow, but 
if they're well maintained, they can they'll blow smoke because of turbo lag. But um, if they're well maintained, the smoke is usually kept somewhat to a bit. My favorite is that 1803. That thing's beautiful on that paint. Which one? 1803. Yeah. It just got retrucked, so hopefully. Yeah, from the key, we'll see it running again soon. I want to run. I've never run it. No? I want to run it. Eddie Stone, I don't know if it was Eddie Stone or not, but I don't know. It was 
it was donated, and it was kind of in rough shape when it got here. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I mean, again, it's volunteer yeah. labor love. Right. This is all, this was, nobody, nobody from outside, this is all volunteer. This. You can tell it's, it's, well, I know you're supposed to get a box car now. What's that? I know you're supposed to get a box car eventually, another one. Yeah, who knows. I think they want to do that once you have cab signals back on that running engine. It's like with anything, you kind of wait and see what happens. Don't put much stock in the rumors until you actually see it come through. Right. Because I know the, the biggest project in this railroad was when this came to Wyatt. Yeah. That was one of the big 12 hours to Wyatt single engine. Yeah. That sucked. Because you had to get a set to pilot too. Oh, yeah. Because this was the same cab signal. Right. There we go. I know every, every freaking engineer hates running a train long with forward, so. It's yeah, not everyone. always the most fun, but. Um, you get some of those southern guys, the southern guys love it. Yeah. Next southern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, that's how they had their locomotive set up. Yeah. Well, not until the early 80s. They right. were that way. And, I, um, I don't get why. They felt it was an added safety measure for the crew. Right. In case if, something big was in the front. If you are involved in a um, grade crossing, you got to take the blunt instead of this. Because yep. if it was a tractor throw, this whole cab would be obliterated. Done. Yep. Thankfully, most of the time, though, it's just the trailers. Full of boxes. Right. Yeah. But I mean, you know, you may hit that tanker truck or whatever. And yeah, I mean, you know. Yeah, that's yeah, where. Yeah, right. the bridge. To the bridge. That, that, that would be not a way to eye one Right. Yeah, that's where you only have a few seconds to jump out. If that. If that. Well, yeah, I mean, most people don't even jump out. That's the thing. Yeah, this is a rock cut. It's beautiful. Back in the day, I assume set the rat faster over these, or yeah, uh, it was at least 40 mile an hour rail. I want to say maybe 50. I'm not sure, but yeah. Dude. Is that a set the rule you run slow now, or is it just the tracks deteriorate? The, tra the tracks determine. They just redecked that bridge. So they haven't lifted the speed restriction on it yet. Right. But um, it's the tracks that determine the speed. <laughs> So I know I've heard from Christian, Joe will bring us up to high speed sometimes if he wants. Joe runs fast. I could tell that the first time I was here, I had a hard time keeping up. Yeah, Joe runs fast.
good guy. He doesn't bother any, you know, doesn't bother anybody. Right. Just come up here and we do our thing. And nobody's leaning over your shoulder, hopping about, holding, you know. That's why it needs to be. Hey, what is, what's that? That's a good way to do a railroad, you know. We all have confidence in everybody else. Right. I don't recall him having a railroad before this, did he? No? Yeah. Uh, he was He was having, a lot of the guys here were heavily involved with the Wilmington and Western. All right. right. That outfit, and for whatever, I, I don't know, you know what, you have to ask, you have to ask around. I don't know anything about it. I, I don't, I don't think they're really a big attraction other than their steam engine. Well, yeah. No, they're pretty big. Are they? Yeah. Are they? Yeah, they, they pile them in on those excursions. <laughs> But a lot of the guys up here came from the Wilmington, it wasn't. Right. And I guess it was like, it got politicized or whatever, and they just said the hell with it, I'm going to take my toys and go. Right. And at least that's kind of what shows them. Yeah. The biggest part was talking to Seth to get this. Right. Yeah, I, I forget what arrangement Joe kind of worked out, but I think the borough leases it for a dollar a year. Wow. Or something like that, and we pay them the dollar a year, whatever the case is. Well, I've, wow. heard, I've heard they don't like you guys. They don't want you having a shop or anything. Well, you, you know, again, it gets political. Yeah. And, um, you know, yeah, they, they may not want a shop because, you know, keeping Winchester County is incredibly well healed for the most part. Yeah. Right. So they don't like the idea of grimy, dirty trains getting worked on. Except these are not grimy, Captain Perry. It doesn't matter. Yeah, it all matters. Yeah, then politics kick back in. If you, um, West well, Down Clear, if you, uh, like, if we were to start running a steam locomotive here, oh, boy. Oh, you forget it. Right. That will never happen. No, but I mean, oh, well, look at Coalbrookdale. That town hates them. Oh, do that. Oh, yeah. Well, look I, at their yard. Well, their yard is right in the center of town. No, I've never been. Yeah, they they can flank. Yeah. They, they break a lot of safety rules too. Oh, do they? Yeah, people fought them working on the track with wow. shorts on. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, no. about to come in the Shivani where you do a little dip into the curve. Right. I love elevated curves, they're perfect. Is that someone's house or a business? It's a business, so it's an art gallery. Yeah, it looks like it was a station too. It was. It was a station. That's North Gallery. Yeah, and then the, the, the always the talk you hear, except the ones that come back to Westchester. That ain't gonna happen. That's one of those things. It, they went back in the late 80s, early 90s, they were talking out until the blue in the face about going back to Newtown. Yeah, look at that. I've heard crazy theories about that. I've heard New Hope take it over. <laughs> And half of it's ripped up. Yeah, I it's know. ripped up and it's ripped out. When I went to camp at George School as a kid, yeah. with all that track still back there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. For the most part, Newtown it's very much intact, except for in town. I know we're in town. But Renath and it's torn up. It is. Uh, it's torn up around County Line Road area. Yeah, it's South Hampton. Torn up. Uh, like near Abington. Uh, what the hell is it? Uh, Philmont Road, that cross there by Turnwood Road. Right. That, that there. will never see rail service again. Uh, so, I mean, and the diamond is taken out. The diamond that was on the yeah. western line is gone. Oh. So, you can see that. Yeah, there's no interest in bringing something back.
a small break fire started but was quickly caught and put out by the crew. We would spend roughly 25 minutes in Glen Mills looking at World War II era artifacts before departing on our journey back for Westchester. <laughs>
that's the only time you guys actually have a great card attached, other than right. photo chargers. Yep. Well, the Amtrak bring back the ballot plant there, you guys would be great for them. Yeah, that would be interesting, wouldn't it? Yeah, I can see how. Perfect angle. 
With our ride complete and the day coming to a close, I took the opportunity to document some of the locomotive roster as well as some of the locations we passed through along the way. First, the leader of today's train, Westchester 7706. The unit was built in 1968 for the Penn Central and changed hands in 1976 with the formation of Conrail. The engine would eventually end up under ownership from Pico before being sold to the Westchester in 2012. The unit still wears its original number to this day. Next to 7706 is RS-18U numbered 1803. It too still wears its original number, being built for the Canadian Pacific in 1958 by the Montreal Locomotive Works. Another Alco on the Westchester's roster is C-424 numbered 4213. It too has Canadian Pacific roots, being built for the railroad in 1965. Most of their rolling stock traces back to the Reading, Pennsylvania, and c &O. I visited the Westchester again a few weeks later. This time I documented the beer charter run they were doing at Glen Mills. I started out just outside of their yard in Westchester and caught them at Cheney and arriving at their stop in Glen Mills. Today's train was powered by a former Reading Blue Liner along with Westchester 4213. Upon their arrival in Glen Mills, passengers were greeted with a live band, food, and other activities. I would decide to leave as it was getting late and they weren't scheduled to depart for another hour or two though.
As my visit comes to a close, I'd like to thank the Westchester Railroad for their courtesy. I recommend paying the Westchester Railroad a visit if you're ever in the area. If you'd like to support their efforts in preserving one of America's oldest fallen flags, I've left their links below.